In a previous lecture, I introduced you to the AWS Organization Service. Now, a key feature of that service is service control policies. Service control policies are made available to you if you go with the all features option of configuring your AWS Organization Service. So what are they? Well, basically, these are guardrails. These are permission boundaries that help you define what services you can consume within a given member AWS account which regions you can operate in, and in fact, what API actions you can actually call. Now in this lecture, I'd like to talk about service control policies a little bit more and cover the key areas that you need to be aware of for the AWS Certified Solutions Architect Associate Exam. In upcoming labs, we're gonna look at how we can actually implement service control policies, which is gonna give you that hands-on experience you need in order to work with AWS. And so let me introduce you to AWS service control policies. So we will be building an AWS organization as part of our lab exercise, covering the Vagan Studio and the scenario that I presented to you in section one of this course. Now, this particular organization is gonna have at least two accounts. It's gonna have the management account and the development account. Obviously, as in my previous lectures, I'd explained that you would have a vast number of accounts for different use cases. For the purposes of the lab, and to demonstrate some key real world skills, we just need the two accounts for now. Now within your AWS organization, you would create one or more service control policies. A service control policies can be applied to the root of the organization, which means that it affects absolutely every OU and every account in that organization. It can be applied directly to the OUs in the organization. So for example, the dev OU, the test OU, and the prod OU. And ultimately, if you want, you can apply service control policies directly to a member account, although that's considered bad practice. Now within these OUs, you would have one or more member accounts. Okay, so in the dev OU, we've got dev app one, dev app two, um, two separate accounts for two different applications, a test environment for those applications, and likewise, a production environment for those applications. Now, as I've previously discussed, you can also have nested OUs. So we've got the prod OU over here. There's nothing to stop it having OUs that are nested within that OU. So you can have multiple OUs that are nested and you can go up to five levels deep in your hierarchy of OUs. This particular OU is obviously going to inherit the permissions defined in service control policy A. Okay, but there's nothing to stop you adding an additional policy directly to that OU. Now the resultant policy that is therefore applied to the OU and any accounts contained within that OU is going to be where both service control policy A and service control policy B have a match. So if service control policy A denies you from using DynamoDB, but service control policy B says you can use DynamoDB and you can consume that service, you're still going to be denied the ability to consume DynamoDB as a service in this other account because service control policy A has an explicit deny for that particular service. And so some key things to remember is that service control policies control the maximum available permissions for your member accounts. Service control policies can be applied to the organization root and all you or directly to a member account. And you can have multiple service control policies being applied to the same or you. Now to use service control policies, you must have configured your AWS organizations with the all features enabled option, not just the consolidated billing feature, okay? So to have access to SCPs, it needs to have the all features configured. A key point that I wanna highlight over here, and this is probably an exam question, service control policies are guardrails, what we call account boundaries. So users still require identity-based or resource-based permission to perform tasks in your AWS account. Now I'll come on to a bit more detail on that shortly. So as an example, if service control policy allows Amazon S3 as a service in DevApp 1, the users in DevApp 1 will still need to have an identity policy or a resource-based policy that gives them access to Amazon S3. If they don't have that permission as an identity policy or a resource-based policy, then regardless of the fact that service control policy allows that service, that user will not be able to consume the service. Okay, so this is a really critical point to remember. Service control policies are simply guardrails. They're not exact permissions that are applied to users or roles in your AWS account. And so be aware of the fact that the effective permissions are the logical intersection between the service control policy and the IAM or resource-based policies in that account. 
SAPs do not affect users or roles in management account, only in member accounts. This is another one that I'd like you to remember for the exam. And service control policies can restrict actions of the root user of a member account indirectly. Now, I've already explained this to you earlier. The root user is the absolute god of your account, okay? The root user has the keys to the kingdom for your AWS account. However, service control policies can indirectly restrict what the root user can do because if service control policy is configured to deny access to Amazon S3, it affects the root user in your AWS account that that service control policy is being applied to. So these are some of the key points that I want you to remember for the exam. Now I wanna talk a little bit more about how service control policies are configured. Let's do that next. Now there are two ways to configure your service control policies, either to create something called an allow list or a deny list. Now a deny list is where you are allowing everything by default and then you specify individual services and actions that you wanna block. This is in fact a default setting. The allow list is a bit more restrictive. It prohibits everything by default, and then you need to specify what services and actions you want to allow. Now the allow list, although far more restrictive, is also one that carries additional administrative overhead. So to give you an example, if you're creating the deny list, you have a base policy configured for you, which is the full AWS access policy. This allows everything, as you can see in the screenshot. You can then add any additional policies to deny specific service or API. API actions against certain resources. The alternative is to remove the full access permission and opt for the allow list. And this is where right at the start, you need to define those services that you want to allow within member accounts in the organization. When it comes to service control policies, it's important to remember that these are just guardrails that define what services can be consumed in a particular AWS account, which regions you can operate in, and what API actions you can call. You still need identity-based policies for your IAM users and your IAM roles that you create that need to be aligned and be compatible with the service control policies before a user in your account can perform a certain action. Now we'll come on to identity policies in a lot more detail in the next section of the course when we do AWS identity and access management. But for now, I really want you to understand this key concept, which is likely to be tested in the exam. On the left-hand side, we've got service control policies and we have three policies defined, A, B, and C. On the right-hand side, we've got identity policies that are defined within member accounts of the organization. In this case, policies B, C, and D are defined to IAM users or IAM roles within the member accounts. So ultimately, when you're trying to decide which policies are gonna be applied, understand that in the case of the service control policy, service control policy A, although it's permitted by the service control policy, isn't currently being consumed or used by any IAM user or role within member accounts. So it's allowed by the SCP, but currently not granted to any IAM users. Therefore, the policy A is available to be consumed, provided that it is also created as part of an identity policy. Similarly, policies B and C are applicable to IAM users within member accounts. However, policy D isn't going to be permitted because it falls outside of the service control policy boundary. So this is one key element you definitely do need to appreciate when you're building service control policies and identity policies for your organization. The next thing that I wanna highlight is that SCPs don't affect users outside of the organization. They only affect users and roles within the organization, within member accounts. So let's say for example, that we apply a policy to the production OU where we're gonna deny S3. That ultimately means that users and roles in those member accounts, in the prod accounts, will not be able to access any S3 buckets within those accounts, okay? They will be denied that access because obviously it's been denied by the service control policy. So even if you apply an IAM policy that allows S3 to these roles and IAM users in those member accounts, they will not be permitted to access the Amazon S3 service to create or delete S3 buckets. However, this doesn't affect external accounts, external third-party accounts. So if the same policy what we call a resource-based policy is being applied to an IAM user of an account that's external to the organization, it will not affect that user and that user will still be able to access the Amazon S3 service. 
This is one thing you definitely want to remember for the exam. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this lecture. Now, in the next lecture, we're going to move on and do some demonstration to create some labs and exercises so that you can get some hands-on experience with AWS organizations and service control policies. I'll see you guys then.